This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by NordVPN. Get advanced security, internet freedom, and complete privacy. Save 73% off the two year plan plus four months free with code MMA Nuts. Nectar Sleep, the last mattress you'll ever need. Get free sheets, mattress protector, and pillows with code GWFIT. Chili Go, the best in cold water therapy has arrived. Save $150 off with code MMA Nuts. Jardina, add a little personal touch for your outdoor home space. Save $40 off with code MMA40. Defense soap. Everyday soaps for everybody. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% off your order. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 636. Six. Turdy. Six. My name's Eagle Waggle. Matt Griff, MMA Show. Bio fans, for our fans, walk the line between serious and ridiculous. What are you drinking? Rust water? Rust water. <laughs> Straight whiskey. Got uh, booze. I made myself a little uh, Sunday Manhattan, you know, so Ce- celebrate Manhattan uh, whiskey, a bourbon. Well, you can make it with whiskey or bourbon, whatever. A bourbon, <laughs> uh, a little uh, bitters, and then some sweet vermouth. And it's usually two parts whiskey, one part sweet vermouth, and then some bitters and ice. Got to nice. gotta have the cube ice, you know, the big, yeah, like doesn't block. look like a cube anymore. But anyways, and you just sip it for like a long time enjoy the taste it's a little sweet mm-hmm. it's a, a little sassy know, a little sassy <laughs> sweet and sassy <laughs> like, yeah like i like Just, like i like my women man that's goddamn right that's how i like my bitches anyways how about those bears. Bull- i was gonna say how about those <laughs> bears yeah we can go bears they won right <laughs> yeah thursday night football baby 16 to what 13 or 14 or something and yeah they won it was it was tough to watch. I was falling asleep. I was so tired that day, because yeah. they were uh, the Bears were playing at the same time the Blackhawks were. Mm-hmm. So I'm like I'm trying to flip between the two, and you know the good thing for the Bears they're keeping their number one draft pick intact by beating Carolina because they own both theirs and their pick. So oh, makes sense. It's it's better for the Bears to beat them than them to beat the Bears. So. Somebody's a genius somewhere. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, yeah. they know they make good picks. They know what they're doing. And then the Blackhawks, Jesus Christ, with this Connor Bedard character, he had a four point game the other night. He's the third youngest person in NHL history to score four points in a game. Wow, that's insane! Two goals, two assists, and then so tonight he had two goals. Another two goals, and I don't know if he had a a assist or not, but he's been four goals in two games. He's been on fire. And they're still playing, like, some of the best teams also. So wait till we start playing some shitty teams. That kid's going to fucking go berserk. He might have an eight-point game. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) He might have four goals, four four assists. You never know. Mm Mm-hmm. And and the goal he scored today, I don't know how the fuck it went in because he was basically on, almost on the line. Uh, I don't even know what you want to call it, like like where the goal sits on that line, mm-hmm. and he scored from there. Like wow. took a puck away from the defenseman, grabbed the puck, and was almost behind the net when he shot, and it fucking roofed it up. Mm-hmm. It's like fucking a hey, that guy is good because now he's starting to hit his stride too. And you're seeing what everyone said he could be, and they're beating teams that they probably shouldn't be. And like if you can keep him, and then someone took a run at him today, and oh one really? Of our, yeah, one of our players was like, uh uh-uh. uh, and because f- it should have been a boarding penalty because he was coming up the boards. Guy came over, fucking cross checked him and face fucked him into the boards. And then one of our players is like, Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. Came over and just started fucking pounding on him, took a four minute <laughs> penalty. They didn't even call a penalty on the guy that hit Bedard. So I'm wondering if he seems to be getting some of the penalties, but I hope it's not like the Bears where you see Justin Fields just gets mauled and there's no roughing the passer. So hopefully, mm-hmm. like that was definitely a penalty. He didn't get the call. So then the players have to step in because you you can't let the other team go after your fucking best player, and it's worth whatever penalties they give you. And unfortunately, then the other team scored, and that was the difference in the game. But you know, 
we need, I think we need the good thing is they put a guy on the first line, Nick Felino, that can okay. Uh, that if someone this is exactly the case, like someone ran Bedard and then he stepped up and fucking took care of it. And that's what you need. You don't want to have all your tough guys on another line. You need at least a tough guy on offense and one on defense that can mm-hmm. like take care of shit. Absolutely. Protect, protect he's fucking 18. He'll be 18 the whole season. Seriously? Yes. <clears throat> I, I forgot when they said he turns 19, but this whole season he'll be 18. It's wild of me to think because it's like he's going against grown men, you know? It's yeah. like think about when you're 18, like going against a guy that's even 25. That's like a not even the same species. No, no. And I I think I was just starting to go through puberty around 18. Like it was super mm-hmm. late for me. So it'd be like freshman year in college. Wow. That yeah. is really late. Okay. So I mean, he's small, but he's thick. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some of these players are trying to take liberties with him, and I don't like it. Like, you got to have a little bit of respect for this respect. kid that's going to be fucking really good. So, yeah. Anyway, let's talk some UFC. We, I'm UFC, ready. 294. I want to share 290 what? Five. Five. Good. I'm fucking one behind. Uh, look at this Motley crew that came in. <laughs> what the hell? Kid, kid Rock. Rock. Donald Trump, Dana White, and Tucker Carlson, and they came into like American Badass or something. It's about as <laughs> Republican as it gets, right there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> all we're missing is Colby Covington in the back. You know, yeah, I, I think Maga he was head. probably at home crying that he wasn't invited to walk out yeah. with them. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can start with the main event. Go ahead. You want Yuri Prokry- Prohaska? Yuri Prohaska. There we go. Versus Alex Pahea. So a lot of leg kicks from Alex in this and it was interesting because one of the videos that got released was just DC, you know, fight week. He's fucking around with Alex and he's like, hit me with that leg kick, but just give it to me at like 5%. And he hits him. He's like, okay, give me to like 10%. Gives him 10. He's like, okay, just a little bit more. And he goes, mm-hmm. he takes it just a little more, a bit more. And then DC's like, Jesus Christ, like what the fuck? Like it mm-hmm. almost dropped DC from like maybe 20%. Mm-hmm. So fucking Alex is hitting Yuri with that. And he actually dropped him with a leg yep. kick early yep. on. And the first round, Yuri got a takedown, but he wasn't able to do much with it. Alex was actually doing very good off his back, kind of like neutralizing whatever Yuri was trying to do. But you could see that that front leg was jacked up because he was switching his stance. Like, oh, I'm already gank. That's right. A lot of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then in round two, Yuri landed something. And then Alex lands a shot and drops Yuri to his knees. And then he's just fucking raining the elbows, elbows. down. 12 six elbows, man. 12 six. It looked to the back of the head, but who don't care? I don't know. I don't who care. Do I know? But uh, definitely way early stoppage. I'm not saying the fight's going to change, but again, he he got up right away and was ready to go. He was and... protesting the whole, was it, uh, what's his face? Um, fucking referee. Uh, it was actually Mark Goddard. Mark Goddard. Yeah, Goddard. Mark Goddard. 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 Yep, yep. So That's he's it. usually pretty good. I mean, I yeah, he took a good shot to drop him to his knees and then another one kind of buckled him to go down to his back, but... He could he could have took I don't know fifteen more shots. <laughs> Let's make it definitive. We need some finality, and not this. Uh, he was kind of out. Yeah, because it, they you know there's back and forth in there. You know, there Yuri is. landed his shots and rocked Alex. So. Uh, yeah, Alex fucking has won a belt in both weight classes now. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell. Oh, he was calling out Adesanya. <laughs> like, come to daddy. Trying to tell him, come up to fucking, you know, light heavyweight now. Which is weird, because I think everyone, I think Jamal Hill was going, hey, man, I want a shot. Like, what's up with that? And then we move into the co-main event, the Tom Aspinall. Pavlovich. Yes. Yeah. 
you know, these guys like they come out and they're all huggy and so yeah, it was them. weird as shit, right? I'm so like, they're like, <laughs> like one guy puts his arm on his shoulder, the other guy puts his arm I'm like, yeah. what are we doing here? I love you, man. Is this it's the Bud Light sponsorship at <laughs> full effect? I don't know what's going on. But you know, you know, Aspinall's got the leg kicks going to the to the calf. Yeah, uh, Pavlovich was doing a little counter punching for a little bit, a lot of moving around. Aspinall looked like he was really like trying to keep the pace pushing, you know. And he's fast, like he's that's super fast. Thing. More leg kicks, and then at some point he he catches him with like a right hand. Uh, Aspinall catches Pavlovich right. Um, I believe it landed like above the ear, something like that, right? And then a little ground pound. And Aspinall gets to finish, so that was a lot more definitive, I'd say, than the the main event. It was pretty clear that that thing was ending. Yeah, you could probably let that one go for about two more shots. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. I would hmm. say it was necessary or unnecessary. I'm not probably sure. a little of both. Definitely necessary. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So you know, Aspinall gets the win. It took like a minute or a minute and a half or something. It's pretty fast. Yeah, and they showed uh stipe in the crowd like after he won i'll show you stipe's reaction so let's see here's here's stipe watching the fight mm -hmm. and there goes the knockout and oh. there's the celebration from stipe <laughs> oh this is you it's a reenactment <laughs> okay i was like wait where's the video okay yeah. no it was just like it looked the same what you just did Pretty much. There was no, <laughs> di there was no difference. There was nothing. Yeah, like happened? everyone else is jumping and whatever. And this was supposed to be his event versus John Jones. So like, ah, what the fuck? And this is Aspinall now with the interim bell. And it doesn't sound like Dana White's going to make Stipe and Aspinall fight. It's bug it. Stipe is shelved. He's waiting for John Jones to come back. And that's, the, you know, I think their retirement fight. Mm -hmm. So I, I would imagine well it's weird because if aspinall is the interim does he fight someone while he's waiting because otherwise he may be waiting forever mm. he's he'll be waiting like eight months potentially like that seems like a long time to not have a heavyweight let's see championship what, fight. what are the rankings at heavyweight so we have two, 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 two. um john uh heavyweight John Jones, Cyril Gaon, yeah. Pavlovich, which is, that's going to change, obviously. Miocic, Aspinall, Curtis Blades. So Jones is locked up with Stipe. Did Aspinall fly Gaon before? No. Did um, Hold on. I can't Shaking. remember that. Uh, no, he has not. But he has fought Curtis Blades, and he lost the Curtis Blades. So MMA math, you know how that goes. Just him fight Curtis Blades then. <laughs> again, again. I'm vote my vote is Curtis Blades again okay, I'm while, good while he that. while he waits. Sure. Yeah, it's just I feel like it's dirty when you have that interim flight floating around there. I don't know if it was necessary for this. Hmm. I guess they just wanted to have a heavyweight championship fight. I think they did. Which is kind of weird. But a lot of finishes. Um and then I'll talk about the, and oh, I was going to say Aspinall said he wasn't able to train for a week and a half because he said he had a back injury. Hmm. So, yeah, that's quite the performance if you were really fucking injured. Mm -hmm. And then I want to talk about Mackenzie Dern and, and Jessica Andrade. Okay, please. Dern. Well, she loses by KO, I think, in the second round. Mm-hmm. Dern is just wild with her striking. Like she actually regressed. It was just, it was almost like you're watching a fight from 1993 UFC when they first started. Like, was she training here, with BJ Penn? I don't know. Here's the jujitsu master who who has no idea on how to. She knows how to throw punches, but no idea how to like recover the punch and like cover up any defense. Zero defense. Chin up just hoping to get knocked out and she was getting dropped and she couldn't really get the takedowns going. Couldn't get the fight to the ground. It was kind of like, like watching like Damian Maya have better striking obviously, but he would also struggle at times to get the fight to the ground sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes a striking match. 
Well, and, she's got she's got personal turmoil, you know. Her, well, they her. both had it because they're both like Andraj was saying she had to, you know, do a bunch of fights to help pay for her divorce. And so they I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess divorce is super expensive in Brazil's. So, um, expensive in uh, Illinois too. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know Dern was also absorbing a bunch of leg kicks so leg kicks were super effective this whole fucking mm -hmm. card seemed like absolutely but it's just odd because I don't understand how you go backwards in your striking she also changed camps and I think they were saying Jason Perillo used to be her striking coach and then now he wasn't but it's just beyond rudimentary like it looked like she had just two weeks of striking at like a cardio kickboxing class and mm -hmm. that's where her striking level was at just throwing crazy wild shit and the biggest thing was no defense i mean you could have just kept like maybe keep it a kickboxing match because you had probably a, a million inch reach advantage because i think she was at least three inches taller than andraj yeah andraj is stocky and fucking real strong and you're you're just keeping it in boxing range like if you wanted to keep it in kickboxing range and then go for a takedown when you can but uh unfortunate and i'll, I'll cleanse the palette for mackenzie because they showed her signing posters and i thought hey that's pretty cool let's see her signing posters mm -hmm. so there's mackenzie signing posters whoa what is that outfit pretty fucking sweet that's what it that's is crazy just trying to get that i don't know what you call that color but i like it yep so she did work and she got worked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then one other fight over the weekend that i want to talk about before oh, we get into I'm, some I'm, sponsors i'm afraid what are you gonna say no no we had roy nelson versus alan belcher in that oh. game bred mma the bare knuckle mma Yes. Uh, it, got, it was a fucking god awful fight. I watched most of it and skipped through some of it. It was all on YouTube. I think it's still there. But Roy just wanted to take go for takedowns the whole fight mm -hmm. and just fucking neutralize the fight. Belcher ends up winning a split decision. Uh, I don't think I have footage, but I want to just show you like the tail of the tape because I don't know. It kind of looks sad. <laughs> you have it Alan is. Belcher at 39 weighing 235 and Jesus. fucking Roy Nelson's 47 weighing 262, but they look haggard as fuck. They do. You know, I know, I know you've never liked Roy Nelson. No, I don't like his body. <laughs> like, like be in shape if you were offended by his i was body. always offended <laughs> can't be a fat fuck and be a fighter that, that is how he me. that is his in shape you know is, yeah but how much better could he be uh hard That's to the say. question hard to say look right. at look at look at fate the fedor you know well he was not as bad as uh roy nelson he was just a little chubby roy is fat there's a difference okay, okay. fair fair enough Speaking of difference, let's talk about some sponsor action. Yes, the holidays are here, and that means one thing. It's time to break out mine and your favorite jeans, t-shirts, and sweaters from True Classic. True Classic's ultra-comfortable, perfect-fitting essentials make for the perfect gift for the men in your life. Everything they make is crafted with premium fabrics to help you look and feel great anytime, anywhere. And right now, for a limited time this November... We're giving our listeners and viewers a special Black Friday deal all month long, up to sixty percent off side white side blah site wide at trueclassictees dot com slash MMA nuts twenty five. You might go blind; it's so much of a discount. So <laughs> let me set the whoa these t shirts. Let's talk about these t shirts for a second. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. They're amazing. True Classic completely re engineered how t shirts fit. They're mm -hmm. tighter around the arms, chest, and shoulder, but I have a looser fit in the torso. The fabric is ultra soft and makes for a comfortable base layer on chilly days. Always have mine under my fucking main shirt. Right here. My favorite t shirts. Yes. So comfy. Yep. So cozy. And men, this is the perfect gift for you, but also a gift for her. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my and our exclusive link at trueclassictees.com. 
MMA Nuts 25 and save up to 60% off site-wide during their November holiday sale. End the year with holiday cheer, thanks to True Classic. I would like to. Mm -hmm. And this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days when you're always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance, get that extra confidence in the bed, bedrooms, uh, pool tables, pools, sauna, wherever you want to throw down. Listen up, bluechew.com. And you can take them anytime, any day or night, so you can plan ahead, be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Simple process, sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done on the internet, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And of course, Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA. America! Fuck yeah! <laughs> That's right. Uh, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our listeners. You can try Blue Chew free. We use our promo code NUTS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code NUTS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you, Blue Chew. We That's love right. You. Right back to the show. What else is going on? Well, I, I know you're headed there shortly, um, but after in the post-fight press conference of yes. UFC 295, Dana White revealed that the UFC has booked the Sphere in Las Vegas for Mexican Independence Day 2024. And they said they've already started working on the creative for it. Um, I'm going to be so interested to hear what you have to say when you go there. If you can visualize while you're there of like, could I picture a fight happening in this venue? I don't know. Sounds crazy, but they're going to do it. Mexican Independence Day. I think it's dumb as fuck. <laughs> you know, just based on not being there in person, but looking at the videos, like one, you're not even surrounding the stage. So you're just going to have everyone facing this way. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be so fucking distracting. Like, what are you going to do? Put a canopy over the cage so that the fighters don't see this massive screen with all sorts of crazy, distracting shit. It makes zero sense. 18,600 apparently is what that place holds. It makes zero sense. It's not small. Pretty big, pretty big, pretty big. Yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. I feel like it would be very distracting. It's like going to be saying. super distracting. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect for like movies and concerts and things that it would add to the event. But I feel like that's going to be super distracting for the fans and more so for the fighters. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you see the fighters look up at the screen to see like what position they're at and where is that guy's head at so I can fucking sneak a couple elbows in. Good luck with this, because they'll even be looking up at the top. Like, what are you going to have on the top? Like this, the sphere is all enveloping. It's like you're in a whole nother world. Maybe it should make it look like they're on another planet or something, mm -hmm. or put it like you're in a prison and you have like guys getting fucking in the corner or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what they can do. It's aggressive. It is aggressive, but that's what prison is. Maybe they need prison rule fights then. Anything goes. Okay. I'm Pride on rules. It. Prison rules. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just spitballing over here. Uh, let's see what else happened. So I saw this is going to be a little lengthy, but so I saw David Goggins has been training Tony Ferguson. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have a little bit of footage uh -oh. I'm going to share. I'm scared. Uh, let me get to, of course, the video I want is kind of wonky. Let me find it. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Okay. So basically, I think he's been, he's was with him for a week and Goggins is just a psychopath and he's just grinding fucking Tony to the bone. So like in a health club and he's pushing him to the point where he's fucking yakking. But you get the point and then, you know, fucking get back on a treadmill and keep going. So that was part I of mean, it. I mean, why train that hard? That's crazy. 
especially when you're probably like one fight away from uh being done with your career and goggins had this to say about uh tony and their their week together so he said tony finished hell week today and i've had many people try yet he is the first one to get through it uh, i've had a lot of great athletes over the years want to train with me but for one reason or another something always miraculously comes up so they can't compete it there's a look I see on the faces of people who are on the brink of quitting called the thousand yard stare. They start asking questions. Uh, when is it going to end? What's next? How many sets are left? Are we coming back again tonight? Is this healthy for you? Uh, this is why I usually start laughing my ass off. I tell them it's time to pack your bag and go home. Once you start asking these questions, I know you're not committed. I broke El Kukui on day one, or at least I thought I did. I had him deep in the hurt locker and figured the questions were soon to be coming. I told Kish late that night, this motherfucker is done, but I was wrong. He woke up on day two, even more fired up to go. There was never a question asked. His <laughs> response was always the same. Okay, coach. Around 11 p.m. on Wednesday night, when you could barely walk after having completed nearly two miles of walking lunges and a shit ton of other cardio and weight oh. training, I figured I would put a fork in him and gut him, but the craziest thing happened. The motherfucker gave me a crazy ass smile and I could tell they had flipped the switch. I was there for the rebirth of El Kukui. It happened somewhere on the Jacob's ladder around 11, 11 PM. I huh. knew then that the torture I was putting him through was no longer torture. In order to get through hell, you have to become the devil. And that night the devil surfaced and boy, it was a beautiful sight to behold. We both laughed because we knew what was happening. A lot of people ask me if I think he will win his next fight. I don't have the first damn clue about that. That's up to Tony. What I do know is that the man who walks into the octagon on December 16th will be a deeply changed man. Sometimes when the fight is near, the warrior must go back home because home is where the hell began. My friends, Tony is home. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, so he genius. says all that, and then Rafael Dos Anjos saw the training and he says, I see Tony's workouts with David Goggins. These long workouts will not help Tony's condition, it will slow him down. It could help him with some mental strength, but Tony does not need that. He's very strong mentally. So, all that said, what do you think about this methodology, especially when you're like a month out from your fight? I think it's too much at this, but you know, I don't know, you know, I don't live inside Tony's head and I think that something can be said for extreme pushing your body to the limit and then tapering down from there. But mm -hmm. to me, it just seems like you're abusing yourself, which would make it more likely you're not at full strength on fight night. I don't know, but I could definitely see like finding yourself again in these, I don't know, like uh, I'm confused. I, Tony's <laughs> well at Tony's age I don't think he should be doing it's not healthy. max effort for seven days in a row to the point where like you're hurling potentially you're you're risking like serious injury training that hard because when you when you're pushing that far and that hard at that old that's when shit breaks. G Goggins is like our age, though. So here's the thing: like that he's guy, this fucking psychopath, and he's, he's probably nuts. on a bunch of shit. Great book if you haven't read his book or listened to it. the audio book. I would recommend because it's more done like a podcast. Really, mm -hmm. really well done. But yeah, that guy's insane. He's he's one of those people that doesn't have an off switch. Yeah, I like, mean, even uh, like when we were doing the Krav Maga, like was that 15 years ago or something like that mm -hmm. and, I'm, and some of the times i'm questioning why the fuck are we doing this i don't need to be training this hard but yet here we are <laughs> hey i mean it made sense kind of at the time but there were times where i questioned it like why am i doing this sometimes when you're in it you're in it yeah you're in it so um yeah i mean we'll see how that, i don't i for tony he's got one fight left in him Mm -hmm. Like he was like Owen 16. It wasn't that aggressive, but he had lost many in a row. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. So what else is going on? Well, 
Bad news for Bellator's Usman Nurmagomedov. Recently failed his drug test and has been... Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Fined $50,000 in the state of California. Six-month suspension by the California Athletic Commission. Um, Apparently, he was prescribed some sort of a medication. Um, He says it's not a steroid, EPO, HGH, nothing enhancing. Um so you know we'll see I, I it's one of those i didn't know kind of things but as these things go you know well it's just odd because it's like bellator well i think was it a i think it was a california state athletic commission yes california but, uh i didn't know anybody was drug testing i thought it was just like you show up that night so in that case it sounds more of like a prescription type thing and again if a doctor prescribes it to you and it's something you need, why does that flag you for a positive drug test? It should seems like there should be exemptions. Like you would a, think you would think you would think. Yeah. I mean, we had therapeutic use exemptions for fucking testosterone. I still think they should have those. Mm-hmm. But someone had oh Vitor Belfort had to go and fuck it up. He test the guy. He's at fifteen hundred. Was it? 15, I think it was eighteen. I think it was eighteen hundred. Oh my god! <laughs> like what are you doing? Uh-huh. Oh the steroids, motherfucker! Yeah, that's Here, unfortunate. I, we got We got to pull up the photo. Hang on a second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it was fucking like mohawk, Jack to yeah. the gills. Yeah. Here, here you go. I mean, looking totally natural in this photo. I mean, lean as can be, jack to the gills. Just, you know, Jesus. And he's going to fuck some shit up for sure. He is. TRT. <laughs> he did. Vitor. I think he kicked Bisping's eyeball out. Well, I think it was already fucked up at that point, and they were trying mm-hmm. to blame him for that. Still the greatest era in MMA ever. The best. Like, you had to come back, like him, Dan Henderson. Mm-hmm. I think Frank Muir was on it. And then he had like all the secret squirrel guys that weren't admitting it, but there was a shit ton of guys on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, also over the weekend, I saw James Tony, who oh. is 55 years old, mm-hmm. had a uh, six round exhibition, exhibition boxing match against Razor Ruddock, who was 59. Oh, they boxed to a draw in Jamaica. I have some footage. Why are we letting 55 and almost goddamn 60 year olds fight? Because people want to pay to see it. Knocked out. Oh, damn. You know, they're both totally in shape, too. You see that? Oh, my God. They're, and I, don't they both have CTE pretty bad? Oh, yeah. They both have um, pretty significant problems, I think, speaking. I think this guy was even saying that, too. I posted this. So. Mm-hmm. You get the gist. I mean, fuck. That's tough to watch. When do you stop? <laughs> when do you stop? Ooh. Uh probably never. Yeah. Well, let's Was fight. It... Let's have two 70-year-olds go at it. I think that's I mean, coming. I mean, well, I think that's that fight may be two of the oldest guys that I've ever seen fight in a legitimate fight besides the street fight because i've seen like the old guys <laughs> fucking swinging it out I'm like you fall you're gonna break your hip old man don't don't mm-hmm. what else is happening uh here we go um i want to show you how to defend a heel hook in jujitsu are you ready sure i'm gonna, I'm gonna not share the sound because i think there's stuff on there but uh you know you get caught in a heel hook it's like it's all good <laughs> nice i like this defense. works every time it's the neutralizer that's yes. weird how that works the guy pulls yeah. a gun and uh fucking everything stops yeah so i'll pull this up today is the 30th anniversary of the first ufc actually oh. it actually includes hoist gracie and ken shamrock today being november 12th eh? yes First UFC, awesome. watch it live on a, a legal stream black box in my college apartment where I invited everybody over. Let's fucking check this shit out. They're going to have fucking fighting and whatever. I'm about to sneeze. This could be cool. 
I'll think about it. There's a mute button somewhere. Hopefully I find it before I sneeze. Um, mute it away. Bless you. Yeah. So that's just crazy to think 30 years because goddamn, this sport has changed in 30 years. And I don't know if it's always for the better or not because there's sometimes when I like that no weight class shit. (laughs) I kind of miss that. I wish they could have open weight MMA and less rules. Obviously, no groin strikes, no eye pokes, no fish hooks. But I think everything else should be legal. Just let them fucking go at it. And let's see. Because if you're in the street, anything goes. Mm-hmm. Anything fucking goes. And I think that was the the sell point originally. It's like anything goes. And it was literally style versus style. Because there weren't many, if any, guys cross-training. There were a couple. But for the most part, it was like, I do jujitsu. I'm a boxer wearing one boxing gloves. Yeah. I'm a fucking sumo wrestler. I train Savat. I'm Ken Shamrock. Mm-hmm. Whatever he was doing at the time. Karate. Shoot fighting or whatever. Shoot the, shoot the boxing. Shoot the so, fighting. Yeah. So that's interesting. 30 years. Mm-hmm. 30 years. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I was 20 watching that. Hmm. Going, huh. This looks pretty fucking cool. Anyway. What else is going on? Uh, <laughs> I forgot to mention this earlier, but John, John Daly on his uh, social media. Mm -hmm. ufc post it's almost time for the big ufc 290 event who's someone that you know you could beat in fight john daly i think i can easily win a fight with my boner every (laughs) morning i beat it single-handedly nice good for him (laughs) hope that's his lady friend i I think i think it is i think it certainly is nice i saw there's a rumor of a boxing match that's supposed to happen between Rampage Jackson and Shannon Briggs. Whoa, sounds crazy. And I, apparently, I have the wrong uh, video here, so I can't show you them. Because Shannon Briggs is that crazy uh, former boxer that was always going, "Let's go, champ! Let's go, champ!" Oh yeah, like oh no. And then I saw heavyweight boxer Deontay Wilder says he wants to have an MMA fight against Nate Diaz. As we're talking about no weight classes, but Mm. (laughs) apparently does he understand weight classes? Of course he does. Let me pick on the little guy. Exactly. Makes sense. Somebody a hundred pounds lighter than basically. Great. Yeah. And one other thing I saw Mike Perry and Eddie Alvarez had a face off. Oh yeah. And they were a little little action action going on there. Yeah. A couple body shots back and forth. And Mike's just not really hitting him that hard. He's like, fucking, you can hit me. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's so. just, to the, just to the body. No big yeah, deal. it's no big deal. There's fucking around. Because mm-hmm. I think someone else was doing that. Who else is? It was Ben Rothwell and someone else. They were trading body shots like that. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. All those bare knuckle guys, they're crazy. Mm-hmm. What else is going on? Uh, I want to bring you a video on how to not enter a ring. Um, here's a guy coming in for a little Muay Thai fight. Mm-hmm. He missed. He almost broke his neck in the process. Oh my god! Oh, didn't go so well for him. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, yeah. do you try again if you fuck up like that, or are you just like, oh, I'm I good? Think, I think you just put my little it. headdress back on. Mm-hmm. I think you just gotta own it. Yep. And saw Luke Rockhold give someone a nice body kick the other day. Ooh. Because usually when someone asks to like, oh, can you kick me? You usually don't go full bore. I mean, it looks like he went about 85 on this one. And that's percent. Uh, Am I sharing sound here? You hear that? Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Jesus. That was necessary. <laughs> he might have died. <laughs> Broke his freaking rib, man. Good lord. He might have died. 
And then someone posted, I guess, Sean Strickland's been doing some interesting training. I'll post this up here. Let me give me a take on this. I got to turn the volume down because there's some kind of weirdo sound in the background. I think they have music playing. Does this give you PTSD? It sort of it sure does. <laughs> you need a little Rammstein playing in the background. Yeah. yeah. Dun, dun, or, uh, dun, dun. Disturbed. Disturbed too. Du hast, du hast mich. Wow. This, yeah. is, this was uh goddamn Krav Maga. Uh, Krav Maga for us. We we'd have sessions where it was like, okay, it's five guys versus you. And uh you're going to start on the ground and they're all going to be on top of you. And then you got to fight your way up and then go after one guy. And the way we trained and the way I forced you to train was I would pick whoever the biggest, strongest guy was. And he's in our group. I want that guy <laughs> every fucking time. Death. Because it, if, if we can train with that guy, nothing's going to be scary if it happens in the real world. If you can yeah. train with the biggest guys and feel what that power feels like, that's why I always did that. Because I'm like, I want the guy that scares me. I'm like, that big motherfucker. I'm like, you're well, how big are you? Six five, like two sixty. Come train with us. Come, come over mm -hmm. here. And we did that in that five or six on one. I like, we had like the <sighs> biggest motherfuckers, and that was probably the most like suffocating when you had everybody oh, on top yeah. of you. I felt like my fight pulse out. for sure was over two hundred during that. <laughs> it was just like <laughs> because and and it's not just that because they would shut off all the lights and yeah. crank the music up super loud. So Cold it's like lights. You got it's everything like, going on. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is pretty close to being in a real fight. Yeah, disorienting. But yeah. you know, I felt like that was effective. But I tell you though, I I, I don't think I've been more twitchy in my whole life, dur except during that couple of years when we were doing that. Like, yeah, somebody snuck up on me, I would like do shit that I'm like, I didn't know I just did that. I'm sorry. Like, it just I would just react. It yeah, because we we developed like muscle memory <laughs> to like. It wasn't even a thought. It was just a reaction. Like if someone yes. touched you a certain way, it's like, <laughs> like yeah. what the fuck just I What did I just do? Because it, it wasn't even a thought. It mm -hmm. just, it was a reaction. My body did it without my brain thinking about it. So that was fun, but crazy. Super uh, crazy. Did you see Anderson Silva's new look? No. What yeah. happened? Um, Kind of looks like Steven Seagal. Whoa. <laughs> and he gained 100 pounds. I don't know. That's crazy. Large I, in charge. I, I don't know what to make of that. That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. What else is happening? Uh, I got a KO to add to start to start the action. Um, crazy KO okay. I found online. Good. Here we go. Here's a little, little wild spinning KO. Bam, bam, bam. Oof, oof, you oof. see that? Yeah, it was like got uh, him with the whole forearm. Boom. What was that Woodley on Koscheck where you hit him, knocked him out like three times before you yeah. hit the ground? Pretty nasty. I think I got one to add. I want some sound. Oh god, the sound is like so loud and only in one ear. We'll try this. Try that. Oh damn. <laughs> you like that oh you like that <laughs> really bad oh that's brutal it sounded really bad yeah i hope she's okay uh she can still eat foods through a straw it's through a straw yeah <laughs> uh cool places to have a fight here's another one we said this is the uh, hang on move some stuff around here because i can't read everything uh the low romana amphitheater in the dominican republic for karate combat 41 not mma but super unique looks dope as shit just in like some crazy place mm -hmm. super dope uh did you know steve amiocic just said hey i have an only fans whoa what kind of content do you think he's posting here? I don't know. I don't want to know. Let's find out. <laughs> <It's cock. laughs> the one guy says cock. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Oh, uh, uh, see, you can't. Every time you list yourself as the greatest heavyweight of all time, you can go fuck yourself. 
He's trolling. No, he he literally believes that. He's trying to get John Jones to come and look at his dick pics. Right. <laughs> come on, John. Yeah, come on. And I think it's for free, too. I don't think you have to pay for it. But... I'm not going to just let you jerk me off, John. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I, I don't know. I feel like Steve Bay might let him. Uh, okay. uh, what else you got? That's it for me. All right. I got a little tweet. Come on, I'm roll. I got a couple. Talk about OnlyFans and whatnot. This, this is Elon Musk. He's like, would you like some tea? Doing his uh, Grok is his version of AI versus chat GPT. Interesting. I don't know how the dog is getting to that position. And Barstool Sports. They're bringing you the Coctagon. Eight dicks enter, one dick leaves. What the hell? I've been in a place that has that kind of setup. It's very That's strange. It's awkward as shit. It's like fucking wriggly field pissing in the goddamn trough i hate that so worse like it's so gay this is gay as shit uh let's do some ass and nuts yeah, so dovey right. on twitter asked he said would you rather be given a hundred thousand up front or a chance at five million dollars if you survive 15 minutes against any female ufc fighter you choose i'll take a hundred grand you don't want to fight a woman? No. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, that's fair. I'm going to fight. Just... I'm going to take a chance and fight a woman. And you could pick anyone because I'll beat any fucking. Well, actually, you don't even have to beat the woman. You just have to survive for 15 minutes. Okay. And I would probably take uh, my order of choice. I'm going to take Mackenzie Dern, <laughs> Paige Van Sant. Mm -hmm. Like, you can go in order like that. But I'd even fucking get in there with Chris Cyborg. I don't, she's not for 15 minutes. I don't have to beat her, but I can just, I could survive 15 with her. You probably could. For sure. Yeah. I'm fucking outweigh her by like almost 100, probably 80 pounds. Would she 145? I'm 220 right now. It'd be all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come out. I'll take, I'll take my sure. guaranteed money, Matt. 100, 100 yeah. You're all, you're a smart man. I'm, I'm a gambler. Mm -hmm. I'll risk that shit. Because it's again, I don't have to win. I just have to survive. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like survival is good. You can break, put me in an arm bar, break my fucking arm. I'm not tapping. Uh, I saw Dana White said Power Slap is worth $450 million in just nine months. Do you believe that? No. What do you think is the actual value? $5 million, if that. I was going to say like $450. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i just i feel like he's he's trolling us yeah I, i'm not buying that no and I, they showed stipe walking in to the ufc event what's up with his walk i'm gonna show you this it's got an interesting gait hmm. is he ride horses for a living like he looks like he's so like saddle sore and, and why little, does he wear a purse? A little injured or something. He he just bugs me. He looks like an old man. What the uh, fuck? Seriously. <laughs> Maybe that's why they don't want him to fight anybody. He's got one fight left in him. Let's not waste it. He's getting fucked up by John Jones, and I'll stand uh, by that. Hard to argue that. Got okay, knowledge? Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. Not necessarily. I've been looking for something to play recently, and there's not anything good out. I was hoping you had some input on that. I, I no, some, I mean for the winter. I'm still messing around with the Diablo off and on, but mm -hmm. it's just like be cool to have something to play. Yeah, I haven't played shit in a long time. Uh, I know there's a new Call of Duty out, but I'm like, I don't even know if I really want to get into that. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm still waiting for a good game. Here's my knowledge. It's an oldie but goodie. This is why when you go to school, you have to be good in what font you use. <laughs> I got <an> old <laughs> Ronda Rousey card. Oh, that's awesome. I wonder if I can buy that. I, I wouldn't mind having that. That's probably I, super I, expensive. I remember that. Yeah. No, it probably is. I would totally it's go for the that. The first in her ass uh in her in first in her class 
But man, someone knew what they were doing when they made that. I think they did that on purpose. That reminds me some. Yeah. Similar to knowledge, there is a show on Netflix um that we were watching with the kids. Uh what the fuck is it called? It's in that vein. It's about a famous card collector. Um hang on, I'll get it for you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty interesting to watch because they, they that's all they do. It's called um fuck. Hang on. Damn it. It's it. I can't find it now. Um hang on. I'll go to my account. One second. It is called Smokey and the Bandits. No. Man, somebody is watching shit on my Netflix and I can't find anything anymore. Don't you hate that when that happens? But anyways, there's a there's a cool one on there where they like trade like they're trying to find like Drake is buying thirty thousand dollar unopened uh boxes of packs and he gets like a Michael Jordan rookie or something crazy. And it's a cool like show about the most famous um collector company out. It, um they they trade like all the sports shit, you know. Mm. So I would highly recommend it. I can't remember the name of it. I'm sorry. That made me just think of it. It's really good. Watch like three or four episodes of it. It's fun. Something cool to watch while you're doing some cardio. It's like the bone collector, but not the card collector. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I'm sure people can figure it out. It's in there somewhere. That's right. That's That's all I got. The shutdown. All right. Well, that has been this week's edition of MMA Nuts. My name is Ingo Weigel. Matt Griffith, thanks for playing.